Okay, so today I want to show you guys how to fix uh, instrument cluster issues with uh, basically 06 and up Crown Victorias with the odometer dimming, uh, but also with the whole cluster dying sometimes. This is mainly for the odometer, but I will address the main solder joints on this part and also give this whole thing a clean up. Um, but I'll also mention if the whole instrument cluster is dying, it could be solder joints on this connector, but it could also be uh, part of the wiring harness, uh, like the connector that actually plugs into that. So reflowing, that's not a guaranteed fix. So first step is remove it from your car. It's pretty basic. There's not a whole lot to it. Then we're going to want to remove this clear plastic piece. Ideally being fairly careful to try to break as few of these clips as possible, but they will all be quite brittle. As you can see, like these are all broken and then the one on the side is not. All right, so that part is basically the biggest pain in the ass. We'll set that aside. And at this point, we'll go ahead and remove the needles. You just pull up. They can be fairly stuck. Just don't twist them side to side too much. Okay, I'm gonna actually pull this out that way I can get a bit better angle on them. Okay, we'll put that off to the side as well. We can also then unclip this part. That's not strictly necessary. There we go. So now what we want to do is pull this off. that off to the side as well and then we'll actually take the circuit board out so I usually start with the actual connector and you basically push back on these till it pops out a little bit and you just have it pop through a little bit just to give a little bit of give and then ideally take something non-conductive and push up on other sections of the board. This isn't stiff enough though, so I'm just going to carefully use Alright, and so that is our circuit board so the areas that we want to get are actually the surface mount components underneath the display that's what causes them to dim so it's those two surface mount resistors there there's another one there and there's also a surface mount capacitor under there that I like to hit and then I also do the through hole resistors on the back of the board as well as the connector here 
and that just makes sure that everything gets done. So I normally like to use MG Chemicals No Clean Flux Pens on these sorts of things, just because they're really easy to clean up. Uh, I'm out of that right now, so I'm actually going to use some Amtec Surface Mount Soldering Flux. It's definitely a bit overkill for this. And it's harder to clean up, but that's all I have. So what I'm going to do is put a couple drops of it there. And then I'm going to use my hot air station. You won't have to do this if you have the actual good flux, the liquidy stuff. Um, I mean, this is far better. But then I'm just going to heat that up enough so that it runs down onto the components. So those are now just slightly coated with a bit of flux there. And I'll put a little bit there as well. And then we'll also go ahead with a little bit over here. Need a touch more on that section. Okay, so I have my soldering iron set for a little over, or a little under 350. And I'm hopefully going to be able to show you what I'm doing here without too much trouble. Actually, you know what, I'm going to take my camera down and switch the position. Okay, so this is going to be a reenactment because my camera messed up. But basically, what we're going after is those little surface mount resistors. So I've actually already done them, uh, but before they were quite dull. So what I'm doing is I'm taking my soldering iron, cleaning it off, putting a little bit of fresh solder on it. And then all you have to do is go in and give the ends of the resistors a little tap. And you just make sure that you have a nice shiny solder joint like that. Then there's also the surface mount capacitor. And you just give that another quick couple taps. And then same on this side for that little resistor tucked in there. And so you definitely want to use flux on this because everything is so close together, you don't want any accidental bridges, and it helps make sure you have a really nice connection. And then I already reflowed all of these joints. But those resistors under there are what causes the dimming issue on the VFD. And if you want to, you can also resolder all the points on the VFD. It is fairly heavy, but it's also really well braced with that many pins. So I don't think that has as much chance of being an issue in terms of vibration knocking it loose over time. But you can do it if you want to be a bit overkill. Okay, so then last up we have the actual connector. I would like it if this was slightly better exposed. Okay, I'll zoom out in editing. So then we're going to do the connector pins. And I'd like to just give it a good few seconds on each one until I can feel them get a little bit loose. So I can feel them move a bit with my soldering iron. And that means that the solder is fully melted, the old stuff. And the new stuff can sneak in if there's a bit of a gap or a crack somewhere. So again, my iron's at 350 Celsius. 
and you don't want to go too crazy with holding the heat on there because there is plastic on the other end of these and you don't want to melt the connector. It would be hard to do a lot of damage, but you still don't want to do it. Okay, so that's all the soldering out of the way. And so now you can see that we have a whole bunch of really nice, shiny, fresh solder joints. And if there were any small cracks in there from all the vibration and stuff on the connector, that's well taken care of. So I'm going to clean up the instrument cluster, like uh, the crap on it, and we will then get to actually putting it in the car, and I'll just show you how you adjust the dials. Yeah, I figured I'd mention, uh, when I'm doing an instrument cluster, I like to give it two or three passes with Meguiar's plastics, metal po or plastic polish. Uh, it doesn't get rid of all of the super fine scratches, and because generally, I mean, this has lots of dust on it when you clean it, it puts fairly deep scratches on. You could use a buffer on it, but it's not going to last crazy long either, and this will still make a world of difference when it's in the car and against a, uh, against the background like a bit in the shade it really looks nice and it's just you know while you have it apart you may as well i guess i'll show the reassembly too i may as well uh first of all make sure you have that in there i give this a quick wipe down with some windex and it's basically as simple as getting into place and gently pushing down i also hit this whole thing with rubbing alcohol and it's basically all dry just to get rid of the flux and clean some of the dirt off of there. So there's quite a lot less dust on it. I have noticed some weird sort of corrosion and stuff on a couple of these, but this one seems pretty good. Then we're going to get this back on. And it basically just involves pushing the plastic down around these clips. And these basically all are like worn, like even if the cluster hasn't been apart, there's gonna be that like white stress marking all around those so that's all in we'll give this just another quick rub and we'll go ahead and pop this back on actually I'm gonna hit that with some windex too okay so i went ahead and cleaned this off in the other part so you go ahead and pop this in and you go ahead and take this piece. And that's not too challenging. Then, you want to put your needles on, but don't put them on all the way. Just put them on a little bit. So just like, till it sort of has a bit of friction holding it. This is going to make it easier for our initial adjustment. And you could do this with a test harness powering up the cluster. I'm just going to do it in the car because the needles are going to do a reset sweep procedure and then we want to adjust them so that they're fairly close then push them down all the way and cycle the gauge cluster a few times just to make sure that they're 100 percent correct but that is our nice cleaned up instrument cluster and then with the cover on that is going to look pretty darn spiffy and also make the rest of the interior of the car not look good, because I guarantee the rest of your car is not going to be as clean as this part. <laughs> but that's something I think we'll all have to deal with doing this. Okay, so now what we're going to do, it's a little awkward to film and do it at the same time. But we're just going to ever so slightly plug this in, but not all the way. And so now the instrument cluster is going to send all the needles back to their 
basically lowest position. So, wow, actually the speedometer is really close. So I'm gonna disconnect the power again. So this one we're actually gonna push in. This one we're gonna drop down. Same with this one. And this one, the tachometer. And then we're just gonna put them up because that seems to help it know to reset. <clears throat> Oh yeah, and you see, like, pushing that in all the way, move that one. So we're going to disconnect this. These two are close enough that I'm confident to push them in. So part of the reason you don't want to push them all the way in is that as it, um, if you need to move it forward far, it will potentially mess this up, because uh, it won't clear it. But that should be in a position where we can get them close enough. And this one, probably good to push in as well. We'll just set those back. <clears throat> okay, so tachometer is basically dead on. Mileage needs to come down. Oh yeah, and you see these ones also need to come down a little. And just go ahead and set those all again. So sometimes it won't do this reset procedure. Uh, what you want to do then is turn the ignition on with the instrument cluster hooked up and then basically let it uh, reset, unplug, or turn off the ignition, unplug the connector, and then bring it back. Five minutes later. Yeah, this is honestly the most time-consuming part of it. Or at least it feels like it. It might be about the same as the soldering, but... You just want to have it all just right. Like, this one could be a millimeter, or half a millimeter higher up. But... Honestly, like, parallax effect is probably going to be... Compensating for that. Because they're all going to... They're going to be slightly off, depending on how you ever so slightly tilt your head. Okay, fuel's nearly there. We'll give it one more little teeny tiny bit. This one's being nice. It's actually properly resetting more than the last one I did. And I'd say that's pretty damn good. Again, it's like maybe half a millimeter off. But it's not as critical as speed. And speed is dead on. If you look at that, that is even with parallax effect. That is pretty good. So, then we can actually take our cover Okay, so now we have our nice cleaned instrument cluster. with a nice, super bright odometer. Working backlight, although it's, you know, impossible to tell during the day. But you can dim it down and put it back up. So yeah, that's how you do the instrument cluster repair. Now I'm gonna pop the rest of this back together for the guy before he comes back. Also, no, that is not my radio wiring install quality. I desolder the connector from the old radio and actually solder the new harness to it. That is definitely not what I do.